Well, I'm not sure where it goes, but it goes somewhere, right? Well, hello, and welcome back to the Backpacking Dash YouTube channel. Different surroundings today. If you've seen any of my older videos, I'm usually cooped up in my garage wearing a jacket because it's a bit cold. But today, I've managed to book a spot at my own dinner table. So, lucky me. However, I did have to clean spaghetti hoops, porridge, things like that up. Um, because this is where my two-year-old usually sits. However, let's get past that. I've got a cup of tea on the go. And the plan for today's video is to basically go through the kit that I've got in my bags in a little bit more detail. On my last video, which has been really well supported, so if you've come to the channel from that video, welcome. And uh, thanks for all the feedback. It's been really good. Um, but at the start of that video, I did a little section on what I was taking with me, basically. It was a quick fire, a few seconds per picture, all loaded up on the back. However, uh, it's quite a popular bit of the video, so I thought I would maybe put those pictures back up, but the products themselves, I'll go into a little bit more detail, why I decided on that product, and you know why I would recommend it or not recommend it. Um, because, yeah, the gear you take is important. So let's break it down a little bit more, go into a bit more detail. I'll put links to all of the products down in the description. Uh, and as always, if you like the video or it's been of use to you, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. If you've got any recommendations for me or things you would do different, let me know because, after all, all of this is personal preference. It's just my opinion on the stuff that I have. Um, people have already commented saying they take different stuff and have advised how I could maybe incorporate something new into my bike packing kit. So that's exactly why we have this community, right? So we can share ideas and enjoy our trips as best we can. Right, I'm going to shut up. Let's get stuck into the pictures and the gear. And we're off. Okay, this is my Pinnacle Arcos gravel bike. It's got my Ortlieb Trio um, sitting there nicely on the bike. A couple of water bottles. I've got one of the fake water bottles which has all my spares in. I'll break that down separately. Um, but yeah, first things first, let's cover some of the external stuff that I'll be wearing and putting on the bike. And then we'll get stuck into what's in the actual individual bags. But first things first, be nice to your bike. It'll thank you for it. Get some lube on that chain before you go. So we've got lights and a bike computer. So the real light that I've been running for quite a while now is the Lazine Zecto. It's an 80 lumen real light. It's got multiple different flash modes and the battery life on it is absolutely outstanding as well as the waterproof rating. So for about £26 you can get this online. Uh, I would definitely recommend looking at that. It's got a really easy attachment point so you can pretty much attach it anywhere. Um, so yeah, definitely go and have a look. For the front light I am running the Alpkit Aerial, which is a 1000 lumen rechargeable bike light. You get about an hour and 40 minutes on full whack, uh, three hours on 500 lumens, and if you start taking it down to the lower numbers, you're getting seven to 14 hours. So pretty good bit of kit, and you can charge it when you're out and about. They come in currently at about 40 pounds, but it's a good bit of kit, highly recommended, and it's waterproof like everything else. As for the bike computer, I've got a version one of the Wahoo Element Bolt. It's been going strong since I've had it. The GPS signal on it is pretty good and it's not ridiculously priced. However, if you are looking for a bike computer, go and buy the new version because it's a full color screen. Uh, it's got a lot more features and I think ergonomically it's been sharpened up a little bit. So that's what we're running with lights and a computer. Just wear one, put one on your head, keep your noggin safe when you're out and about on the bike. I've got a POC helmet here, super lightweight, good ventilation, does the job nicely. I wear it for pretty much all types of cycling. I don't care what you wear, just put something on. Now, the gloves, I've got some Lacole gloves, and this is Lacole's Deep Winter Gloves. They retail a slightly eye-watering £80. However, Strava frequently do Lacole challenges where you can get a 50% off voucher if you spend £100 or more. I strongly suggest you do one of those challenges. That's pretty much how I got all of my Lacole gear. The race cape here, all folded up, is an Endura race cape. Waterproof, windproof, super lightweight, and you can scrunch it into any available space you've got. Retails at Endura for $84.99, but if you shop around on Wiggle and places like this, you will get this almost half the price, so shop around. Now, I've got a head torch here, which is winter specific, but this is the Quark, or the Cork, depending how you pronounce it, from Alpkit. Retails at $39.99, it's rechargeable, fairly lightweight, you can put it in pretty much any free space you've got. It's got numerous different modes and it does the job nicely. Nothing super exciting, but everything you're going to need for a winter night. Obviously, I'm rocking a beanie hat. Again, this is a Patagonia one I picked up in the sale. 
don't wear one with a pom-pom on because if you decide to wear it when you're sleeping that can get pretty annoying then i've got my shoes now these are combined with some neoprene overshoes uh, but underneath i've got the giro rumble vr mountain bike shoe which if you shop around i think they're quite old now you can probably pick them up for 60 70 pounds they're comfortable not made for winter riding really uh, i've actually bought myself some new shoes that are coming today uh, for the winter riding however three season shoes these will do great the neoprene overshoes you can get them on wiggle for 12 pounds 50 just now in the sale advice for those get a bigger size than you think you should get because they're quite tight to fit on but they will keep out a decent amount of water and keep your feet a little bit warmer than usual so good little bit of kit to have especially for this time of year right the frame pack what am i putting in here we're going to start off with this power bank from Anchor. It's 20,000 mAh, and I have no idea what that means. What I do know is that you can charge two things at once because it's got two USB outputs. You can charge it via micro USB or USB C. I've done my phone, my GoPro batteries, my head torch. What else could I put on there? Uh, all sorts of stuff, basically. If you've got the right cable, this will charge it up. £33.99 on Amazon just now. Go and grab yourself one. Then we've got a medikit, and this is a classic case of I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. This retails at £8.39 on Amazon, and it's got your basics in. Safety pins, plasters, emergency blanket, emergency ice pack. I think it's got some eye wash in there even. Um, but still, I don't want to use it. I've not used it yet, but it's better to have it. Now, my stove. This is definitely one of my favourite bits of kit. A full titanium stove weighs next to nothing. It's called the Coro. You'll find it at Alpkit. Retails at £54.99. All those little legs fold in, so it turns into something really small. Pop it in its bag. You can fit it pretty much anywhere. Yes, you might think 55 quid is quite expensive, but this is definitely a case of you get what you pay for. Now, what am I putting on top of my stove? Well, I'm putting my Mighty Mug 600 on it. Of course I am. I have a 650 version, which must be an old version, but this one here is £38.99. Which I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of money for a small, lightweight titanium mug. But that's what you're paying for, isn't it? Lightweight. The handle's retract in, it's got a little lid to go on it, and they've made it the perfect width so that if you buy your gas from Alpkit also, which is $3.99, the little 100ml gas canisters fit perfectly inside your mug to help you save a little bit of space. So, all in all, a nice little setup. And of course, we've got to have some toiletries with us. I've got some contact lenses in there, I've got a foldable toothbrush, some toothpaste and some deodorant, and that's about it. Keep it simple. So, that's it on the bike, everything inside of it. The additional things I've got in there that I've not mentioned, I've got some coffee sachets, I've got some cable ties across the bottom, and I've got some biodegradable fire lighters, which basically I've just tinfoiled at the bottom of the bag, just in case I can't get the fire going. Okay. So we're on to the seat pack, the biggest of my three bags. Let's see what's inside it. We're going to start off with the Soloist XL tent from Alpkit. The XL version retails at £10 more than the normal, so it's uh, £149.99. It only weighs in at 1.2 kilos, but I'm six foot two. I'm quite a slight build, but having that extra leg room and a bit of room for some of my belongings inside and in the porch area is really handy for me. In the summer, you can run it with just the mesh layer. Any other time, put the full thing up. Super lightweight, super easy to put up and super easy to take down. Highly recommended if you're looking for a new tent. Now, when I go on to speak about this sleeping mat, I don't want you thinking, this boy's got loads of money, who's spending this amount of money on a sleeping mat? Because I get it. This Etherlite XT mat retails at 170 from C to Summit. I think I got it in the sale around 130 from a different website, so definitely shop around. But like I said, I'm quite a slight guy. Might be tall, but I'm fairly lanky. Um, I get cold. This is 10 centimeters thick with an R value of 3.2. And an R value is basically just an insulation value. The higher the number, the better insulated you are. If you've seen my last video, it was fairly nippy. I was on top of this mat in my nice new sleeping bag, which we'll cover somewhere else. And I was very toasty. So it is, unfortunately, it's a classic case of you get what you pay for. This is a great mat. Highly recommended, and a full review is coming in the future. Then we've got the little pillow. Yes, it's a little extravagance, but this pillow actually, well, it goes perfectly with the sleeping mat because it has an attachment point so it doesn't fall all over the place whilst you're sleeping. Retails at £35. 
Don't pump it all the way up. Have it a little bit soft so your head can sink into it. You'll thank me for it. And then we've got some fire pot meals. Now, there are cheaper versions of dehydrated travel camping meals out there, but these actually taste really good. And I'm not just saying that. The Orzo Bolognese, very, very tasty. Yes, they're a bit pricier. They retail anywhere between six and nine pounds, depending where you shop online. Loads of different, well, recipes, I would say. Um, go and take a look. And then last but not least, I've got my Rab Cirrus Flex hoodie. This retails at £140. Again, shop around in the sale. Super lightweight, very, very packable. You can squash this into any free room you've got, but it holds the heat really, really well. The hood fits nice and tight to your head. It's kind of elasticated uh, around where your forehead is. So if it is quite nippy, you can really lock the heat in and it's not so bulky that you couldn't wear it in your sleeping bag if needs be. Now, there's a few things in that bag that I haven't put pictures on. Things like bib shorts, because nobody wants to see the state of my bib shorts. Base layers, an extra pair of socks. Just the basics when it comes to clothing, um, but things you wouldn't want to be caught without. So we've arrived at the final bag, the handlebar pack. This is where I keep all my light stuff. So without further ado, let's see what we've got. So this is my Pipe Dream 600 sleeping bag from Alpkit. This is my winter bag. It's a four season bag. And it comes in at a pretty penny of £269.99. Now, Alp get our sales on quite frequently, and I think I picked it up for 230 Yes, it's a lot of money, but it is a really solid piece of kit. It's filled full of hydrophobic down, so it stays drier for longer. It's got 750 for its fill power, and I have the long version because I'm lanky, and it still only weighs in at 1.1 kilos. As you can see from the picture, it looks quite big, but because it's full of down, it actually compresses really, really well into the small handlebar pack. Next to that, we have the Hunker XL Bivy bag. That comes in at £69.99, but it's great. You can fit everything inside it, sleeping bag, sleeping mat, pillow, and there's still room to store some uh, valuables down the bottom end, depending on where you're bivying. Completely waterproof, windproof, you can pull it tight at the top to make it kind of mummy-like to stop the wind and the rain getting in if the weather does turn. And you get all of this for just 500 grams in weight. So just the final touches to add now, and we're going to start off with the water filter. This is the Micro Squeeze water filtration system from Sawyer International. It weighs a measly 78 grams and folds up beautifully into that little IKEA bag I've got it in. Let's get down to some of the stats though. It removes 99.999% of bacteria, including salmonella, cholera, and E. coli, and it removes 100% of microplastics. Now, I mostly fill it up from clean water sources, running waters, rivers, but I have filled it up with some slightly suspect looking water a few times, and I am yet to be ill. So, if you are looking for a water filter, I would definitely recommend this one. I think it's good for like 10,000 gallons, which is just ridiculous. And you're getting all of that for £46.95 from Ultralight Outdoor Gear. But check the link if you're looking for one. Next to that, I have the dry bag. And this is just a generic dry bag. I think this one might be from Alpkit. You can pick them up from just a couple of quid, really. Roll top dry bag, and I mainly use it for sitting on if the ground's wet when I get to camp because it's waterproof. And I also put all my rubbish in it so that I'm not leaving anything behind. Quite handy to have. You might not use it, but it's quite handy just to have clipped on the bike, especially if you maybe pop to the shop towards the end of your ride to pick up some treats. And you thought we'd never make it, but there we go. The bike's fully loaded up. One thing to add, on the back of the seat pack from Ortlieb, they've got a lovely bungee cord system, and I strapped some flip-flops on there. Quite handy to put on top of the dry bag for a seat if it's a bit wet and also for kicking around camp and any river crossings such as this one. But yeah, quite handy, especially if you need to, you know, that toilet break at two in the morning. You'd rather be walking around camp with something on your feet. So there we have it. From start to finish, you've seen everything that I've got in my bags and on my bags. However, the one thing you haven't seen is where my thumb is pointing. That is my spares tube, and it has exactly that inside of it. It has a tube, it has tyre levers, it has a multi-tool, an air pump, puncture repair kit, some tyre boots, uh, what else do we have in there? Oh, obviously, as I'm running a tubeless setup, 
I've got loads of different tubeless plugs just in case. But yeah, really handy bit of kit to have and it fits in a water bottle holder. You can pick those up for just a few quid I think on Planet X. Okay, so that's me, all finished. I hope this breakdown and insight into what is in my bags has been useful. If it has, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And if you've got any recommendations, uh, throw them in the comments below. And uh, I'll definitely be sure to have a browse because you know what we're like. We're always looking for new kit. Okay, cheers for watching. I'll catch you all next time.